this video, I'm going to show you how I built this miniature vault. The design is a sequel to the door I used on my coin sorting vault, but this one is a bit more complex. I had three primary goals for this design. 1. Integrate a 3D printed lock and key. 2. Put all of the gears front and center. And 3. Design every piece to print without supports. This model was printed in PETG, but I've printed one in PLA also and it works well. If you want to build one for yourself, the files are uploaded on printables along with more detailed instructions and a complete list of non-printable parts. For all of the gears, I've included the original design plus an altered version with looser tolerances, so once you get into it, you can print a gear or two to test how it works with your printer and selected filament. So without further ado, here's how I put this thing together. All right, so what I have here is the core of the door. This is what everything's gonna be mounted on. And you can see I've already glued a few metal dowels in place here. There are a bunch of different tracks and cutouts and each of them has a particular use which will make sense as we get into it. Uh, but the first thing I wanna show is um, these pieces which will actually act as the bolts when the door is closed. So on the back of each of these, you can see there's a little cutout and that's gonna align with the track here. I've tried to keep the tolerances a little bit looser than I have in the past, so I hope that this will make it smooth for everybody else. Um, I've been getting very good results, so I'm just going to take these and put them in place. So right now, all the bolts would be extended, the door would be locked, and you can see that each of the pieces has a leg with uh, these gear teeth. Um, technically, a linear gear like this is referred to as a rack. So um, we have racks here that are converging around these two points. And as you might guess, you just take a gear, stick it in there. We can add another one up top. And this will tie the motion of all of the bolts together. Um, driving just one works, but eventually I'm going to have a series of gears which will drive both of these simultaneously, and that just adds to the smoothness of the door operation. All right, I'm going to remove these gears for a second so I can explain how the locking mechanism is going to work. You can see now that these bolts would be extended, and when they're extended, a little gap forms between the back of this rack and the frame. And I did that intentionally because I wanted to create a secondary set of uh, racks and a gear which will drive a rack into that space like that. So that's going to prevent this door from uh, opening. I can add the second rack up here just like that. So when that's extended, the door is locked. You retract that and the door can move freely. So you might be wondering how does this interface with the actual key lock? So um, I have the pieces of the lock here and you might be able to tell that this is the keyhole and connected to the keyhole on the back there's this gear. So this is going to sit in place just like that and when you insert the key and turn it you can see it's going to retract the bolts and let you open the door. Before I assemble the lock, I want to take a moment to explain how it works. The lock is composed of three 3D printed pieces, the top case, the bottom case, and the plug. Looking inside, there are three shafts that run between the top case and the plug. Within each shaft, a spring pushes down on a metal dowel, known as a driver pin, which pushes down on another dowel, known as a key pin. When we insert the correct key, the pins in each shaft align with the outside face of the plug, allowing it to rotate. This is called a pin tubular lock, although this is an extremely simple version and not super secure. Assembling the lock is easy, but first you should check the openings in the lock plug to make sure that a 5mm metal dowel can easily slide in and out. It was a bit tight for me, so I used a file to increase the opening until the dowels fit comfortably. Next, I added three metal dowels into the plug and inserted the key to make sure the dowels form a cylinder with the rest of the plug. I then put three springs into the upper lock body followed by three more metal dowels. The layout of all of these dowels and springs is important, so check out my printables page for the correct size and orientation, otherwise the lock won't work. 
Add a few drops of glue to the lower lock body. Slide the plug into place with the holes facing up and clamp the whole thing together. With the lock complete, I'm ready to add it to the door. Notice that the gear and the racks for the lock are in place before the lock is installed, and I put them in the extended position. I recommend a dry fit to make sure it fits as you expect, and if that works, you can glue the lock in place. It's easier to add glue to the recesses in the door core rather than to the back of the lock. Now we can add the door bolts back to the core, but don't add any gears yet because we need to install an intermediate frame piece. There are two nice glue surfaces near the lock racks and four more in the corners. You can also add a few drops of glue along the perimeter, but that's not totally necessary. Clamp the whole thing together while the glue dries. We need to add two more dowels to the frame piece we just added, but don't glue them in. Make sure all the bolts are fully extended, then add one of the intermediate gears making sure the orientation matches the video. You can then add the biggest gear, again making sure that the door bolts are extended. Repeat the process in the bottom half of the door, then we can add the final gear to tie everything together. Put the key in to unlock the door and test out the mechanism to make sure it works as expected. This key was printed in PETG, but there's something unsatisfying about a plastic key. Keys are meant to be metal. And that's where PCBWay came in handy because they offer 3D printing in titanium, stainless steel, tool steel, and aluminum, along with every type of plastic you can imagine. They kindly offered to let me try out 3D printed metal, so I went with the most expensive option, titanium. The process was easier than 3D printing at home. I just uploaded the same model I used to print this key, and a week later I had a key printed in titanium. The finish looks great and it feels like a real key, and when you drop it on a table, it sounds like metal. Thank you to PCBWay for supporting this video. Next, we're going to add the cap to hold all the gears in place. It's made up of three pieces and you need to glue them together like this. Carefully add glue to the recesses in the perimeter of the cap, then shimmy it onto the door. It might be a bit tight, but that's fine. Use clamps to hold it in place while the glue sets. The last piece of the door itself is a handle, which I've already assembled by gluing in a few more metal dowels. Just add a drop of glue to the handle and put it in place and the door itself is complete. To connect the door to the box, we need to add the hinge piece. I'm using JB Weld for this because the hinge will hold a lot of weight and I want to make sure it's a strong connection. You can see I've added JB Weld into the holes in the hinge, and then I just carefully slid it onto the metal dowels and clamped it together to dry overnight. The next day, I was ready to finish the project. The door slides right into the jam, and the holes in the hinge should align with holes in the jam. Add two metal dowels into the holes to create a strong, durable hinge. You might need to use clamps to make sure that the dowels are fully inserted. I've used this hinge design, using metal dowels, on a number of projects, and several people have successfully 3D printed the dowels for the hinge, so that's an option, but I've never done it myself, so if you want to try, it's at your own risk. The box itself prints as one piece, but I included an optional false bottom, so you can add some weight to counterbalance the weight of the door when it's open. Connecting the box to the door is simple. Just add a bit of glue and push the two pieces together. It was pretty tight for this box, but I reduced the tolerance on the files I uploaded, so clamps shouldn't be necessary. And with that, the vault is complete. If you found this interesting, please let me know by liking the video, and if you decide to build one for yourself, I would love to see photos on printables. 
This channel is pretty small, so if you're still watching and are interested in seeing more, please hit subscribe. This is my fifth vault design, and I have more cool projects coming soon. Thanks for watching.